Welcome, welcome. Welcome for today's Pipan Founders Club. I hope you have your morning coffee ready and you are ready to get excited about today's event. We're going to have a really nice talk about expanding your software as a, uh, as a service business into the United States uh, 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 markets. And we got the story of Promo Republic today. And actually, without further ado, let's go straight into the topic. But uh, and 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 let's go let's go into <laughs> into the uh, the story. But before that, I'm going to go quickly through the program. So uh, there will be the uh, the story coming next, and we have a question and answer session with the audience. So your audience, you get to uh, have your questions in the in the end of this uh, session. Uh, but yeah. So before we dive, dive deeper into the story of, of, of the Promo Republic and how you went to US, let's get to know the founder himself, Max. So welcome, Max. Uh, and uh, would you like to introduce yourself and how did you become an entrepreneur in, in Finland, actually? So you're not originally from Finland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy to tell my story. Good morning, uh, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Indeed, indeed. Um, happy to to tell my story. So um, uh, I'm a co-founder of uh, of Promo Republic, also carrying the role of chief executive officer here, and um, and that's my uh, that's my second business. I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, and before that, I founded co-founded. Uh, a digital agency that was focusing on social media. And that's pretty much the space where Promo Republic is, uh, is active. So I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. Yeah, where was that business, by the way? Sorry? Uh, where was that business? Was it in Finland as well? Or? Yeah, so I'm originally from Kiev, Ukraine. Yeah. And uh, that was a digital agency working with big brands like uh, Danone, Henkel, Kimberly Clark. And we've been creating kind of startups for these big brands. And once we even created a niche social network. So I had a feeling of being a bit of a Mark Zuckerberg for some period of time. It was a social media network for young mothers uh, that were very actively discussing their new kind of uh, lifestyle. Let's put it like that. Yeah, but we, um, I was always dreaming to, uh, to create a, a product business that can be sold globally. Uh, uh, and uh, expand globally, and uh, that were that was the time where startup accelerators started to pop up, and we ended up with the team in uh, in Tallinn, uh, where we have built the initial version of Promo Republic. It is um, it is a platform that helps uh, to manage social media. Uh, it automates a lot of things and helps to create social media posts based on the uh, content library. So it's very uh, makes um, makes it easy for for non social media marketers to do social media marketing, and uh, an accelerator was cool. And after the accelerator, we were supposed to have a demo day uh, in uh, Estonia, in Tallinn, and in London. However, the demo day in London didn't work out, and exactly at that time, Slush was happening in Finland. And I hopped on a plane. I knew nothing about Finland uh, and uh, absolutely nothing about Finnish startup ecosystem. Uh, however, I hopped on the ferry and um, and uh, ended up in Slush. I was shocked by the quality of the event. I knew how to pitch my startup. I was training the pitch for, I don't know, three or four months of the acceleration program. And I just pitched it to everyone I saw around. And it, it, it worked out. So I mean, uh, investors were uh, were reacting, got interested. I got positive feedback. I also uh, got interest from one of the Finnish um, established uh, companies, Finecta. They were they were looking for a solution that can help small businesses that they had in portfolio to do social media marketing. So it became really serious. And and also I was excited to see some uh, startups from Startup Sauna that was a Finnish accelerator on stage. And I got inspired. Wow, look at this audience. Thousands of people are listening to the pitch of these guys. And and we ended up applying to Startup Sauna <laughs> and we're going through the through the acceleration. And as one of the one of the best teams, we got 
we got this grant to go to US. So Startup Sauna physically brought us to US. And that's where we actually ended up and realized that we can go, uh, we can go um, um, US and it's possible also, uh, also for us. And uh, after Startup Sauna, we just discovered the ecosystem and I decided to relocate to Finland. And we kind of used all parts of the startup ecosystem. We have business angels from FIBAN on board, mm. got some support from Newco, we went through Startup Sauna Accelerator, we got some support from Business Finland. And uh, yeah, and now I'm involved in, uh, in the ecosystem and in supporting it as well. So I'm, I'm leading a, a community of software as a service um, enthusiast in Finland called Sastok Local uh, Helsinki. All right, cool. How, uh, how many founders you were actually uh, when, you, when you came to Finland? How many there were? Um, yeah, so we went through the accelerator with my technical co-founder. And there was a third guy uh, who had the initial idea. And uh, uh, at that time, it's, it's hard to believe, but he was doing another acceleration program in parallel. So we've been doing Startup Sauna and he was in Chile going through Startup Chile uh, to get access and to understand and get the connections and also get the money because, uh, because we, we needed some financing at that point of time. So we were three, three co-founders. Okay, that's cool. All right. Hey, let's jump into menti.com. So, Wasim, if you may switch the slide. So, everybody, if please uh, go to menti.com in the audience and you get to, uh, we have this one question for you to answer. So, the question is what to take in consideration uh, when expanding or entering to the U.S. market. So, go there, uh, put your thoughts there. We want to make you think of the topic and we're going to for certainly we're going to be talking about those topics today with Max but let's get everybody involved at this point you can find the code uh, from the chat it is 58490937 and you can see it also also up there and while we wait for people to answer, uh, I would also like to mention this is a great time to point that uh, uh, Promo Republic is a uh, Viban Founders Club partner as, as well. And Max already told you what Promo Republic does. Uh, so, so there is a special offer launch uh, now in, in our website, so you can go to Viban dot uh, org slash founders and you can find this uh, code and I'll be I'll be sharing more about this in the later part of our interview but you can find it already and, and promo republic is our partner so great to have you all right we have few words already coming up <clears throat> so go to market plan corporate structure product MVP strategy taxes all really important topics, competitors, of course, legislation. Yes, that probably is different than that. So Max, what kind of thoughts these words bring to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think I'll, uh, I'll start. Um, yeah, this, these words, if, if I knew all these at the beginning, <laughs> maybe it would be easier. <laughs> So, I mean, we, we made two attempts going, um, going U.S. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, once again, we started providing our social media management platform for really small businesses. And uh, because of the nature of our startup, we have not only automations, but we also have a content library. We had to choose a market which is really big, because if you create... Uh, like tens of thousands post templates, they should be like usable for a very big market because it's not it's not easy to translate uh, content library for several markets. So initially, we we chose the biggest market, um, English speaking market, um, and uh, the biggest English speaking market is of course like North America. So uh, uh, we were um, we were unexperienced. We didn't know how to get customers in the US. Our product was so cheap that people didn't want to spend time to talk with us, give us feedback. 
they just wanted to use the product and uh, get the value. So it was really hard to get any feedback to get first customers to sign up. And mentally, we were also like, like we're selling to a different planet. <laughs> so we didn't really, mm-hmm. I, I've never been in the US myself and co-founders either, never, ever. And because of Startup Sauna kind of grant, we were forced to go to US and we saw, okay, so these are real people. It's a real world. We got to talk with, uh, with our other startup entrepreneurs and we got this advice. Okay, guys, uh, just make sure your, uh, your web page and your service looks exactly like uh, other US uh, software providers. So we, we found this place with an, a virtual office in Palo Alto. I think it's called Nordic Innovation House or something. You can rent an address there virtual address. So we made sure uh, we have US address and everything. We have some testimonials from the US and we looked exactly like other uh, other US software, but there were no users using our service. We couldn't get enough feedback. Uh, and we were also not sure that our, our product is needed in the US. And we were looking for some kind of a hack. We were ready to give our product for free or uh, however, just to get users on board. And then we found this um, um, kind of company called AppSumo. And these guys, what they do, they help young uh, SaaS companies to sell a lot of subscriptions. But instead of monthly subscriptions, they sell lifetime subscriptions. So uh, so it's kind of, a, and they also take 70% from this revenue. So they take a lot, but you get thousands of users immediately within two weeks. And we went for this deal and uh, we prepared for this deal and uh, they made this email blast to millions of users that want this like cheap lifetime access to the service. And within two weeks, we got four, four and a half thousand users. And we got, I don't know how many hundreds of questions and feedback. And most of the feedback was negative. But that event, that it, came, it actually like was like a wake up call for us. We understood, okay, if these people take time to ask questions or to complain, it means our service is valuable. And, uh, and that's very important to, uh, in going to the US is getting first uh, US customers on board as fast as possible and start talking to them, asking questions and start improving products or measuring data, uh, usage data within a product. So that, that hack was, uh, was very important and that changed everything. And after that, we realized, okay, we can go US um, and um, our, our, pro- our product works. So that was kind of decided. Yeah. How about uh, uh, also like, uh, do you feel that in this, this, this time when you went, I guess the, this was uh, your, like you, you mentioned that uh, you went to U.S. markets because uh, Q was kind of <laughs> forced you to go there and you fi- figured out that, okay, this is actually a really good market for us. So how many of these words, for example, that we have in the cloud, did you kind of have in your consideration uh, before, yeah. before this? Yes, yes, yes. So um, we were not thinking, well, that's first attempt, uh, we were not thinking about any corporate structures uh, we, we were a Finnish company at that time, so it was too early to think about some kind of a flip or getting, uh, getting money. So what we've learned, uh, American investors typically want to take B rounds in SaaS companies. So they want European funds to do the job of, C, of pre-seed and seed funding and even A rounds nowadays. So going to US and uh, trying to get funded is, uh, is, too, is very challenging. So um, you, you can try, of course, uh, based on great, crazy cool traction, but that's not the way to go. But building initial relationship and talking to investors in the US, um, um, also about uh, corporate structures, about competitors, getting this free advice is possible. So I, I managed to get a meeting with uh, Sequoia. Uh, I mean, with, with the top uh, companies, you always can get 15 minutes if you are creative enough, you just pitch. Uh, and say, okay, we're a new kid on the block. We want to talk uh, about three specific things, get advice. So initial connections are very important. And typically these big guys are so connected. So their intro works immediately. And then they just uh, g- give feedback about your ambitious plans. So connections is very important. Getting free advice from uh, investors there. Easy to meet with everyone uh, for sure. And uh, and from, from there you can 
you can learn about uh, about competition and uh, fine tune your strategy. All right, cool. Hey, let's we can we can drop off the menti at this point. Uh, we can continue. So, uh, like you mentioned, uh, Mark, that basically you went to the U.S. market twice, and, and yes. so so you had your first first attempt when uh, when you went with Kiwas. That was around uh, 2016. And then the second time was in the end of 2019, and and probably your approach in both times were a bit different. And you already explained how the kind of the first attempt, how did it look like? Uh, would you like to maybe tell a little bit more about the first attempt and and maybe a, kind of some cultural learnings that you figured out because you said that you never been there before. So how was yeah, the first? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for sure. So um, uh, first attempt was just to discover US, uh, get a feeling that we can actually, someone needs our product there and we can talk to people there. So, uh, And the, the cultural discovery was that somehow, I don't know, in Europe, if someone was using our product and they couldn't find something, they were blaming themselves. But in the US, everyone blames software provider. So if I can't use it, it's software, it's it's bad. And, and they have so many competitors to switch. Uh, so this, uh, this competition that we felt there, this extreme competition made us understand, okay, so it's gonna be hard to make it, but if we make it here, it will be easy to compete in, in, in Europe. So that was the learning. Second was uh, people are really ready to talk and spend time with you never, you, uh, no one ever knows where the new opportunity pops up, so it's easy to to get people to talk to and get advice. And um, also, we understood that life in Silicon Valley is extremely expensive. And uh, and um, sometimes, uh, so we decided not to relocate at that point of time. So I think I spent around three months uh, there to get initial network that I could nurture uh, in future. And I came to. Um, to a conclusion that at this point of time, we will do kind of a trips. We will go to US, make as, me as many meetings as possible within two, three weeks. And it's always easier to get meetings when you have a deadline. You're saying, I'm, I'm in the US for three weeks, let's meet. So no one wants to lose an opportunity. And then, uh, and that, that were just much more effective and we could afford that thing. And we decided to grow with marketing to SMB market in the US from Europe. And um, uh, the second attempt uh, was in, uh, I don't know, in, th in three years, like in 2019. Uh, with our product, we decided to go up market. So this classical uh, system of a SaaS company, we're starting with SMBs, then we, when, then we grew to, to agencies. So we created a solution for, for agencies and freelancers. Uh, that help SMBs on social. And then we got an inbound lead. So some big company came to us and said, guys, your agency solution is good enough for us. We just need you to build a couple of features. I think that was a franchise company uh, from, from, from the US, a franchise of, I think, secondhand shops. And uh, yeah, and we realized, okay, so if we have one of these customers interested, let's try to get more of these customers on board. Uh, and we were shocked from the amount of money that this company was ready to pay. It took a long time to talk with a big customer, but they were ready to pay like a thousand times more than uh, SMBs were paying. And uh, and that's that was the second attempt. And we didn't go to US to make the second attempt. Um, uh, what we did, we had a native speaker in our team at that point of time, head of customer success, Raquel. Uh, she is like Finnish American, uh, but born and raised in New York. And um, we we did this founder-led sales like R and D. So we identified more franchise customers from the U.S. And I reached out to them from my email and from my LinkedIn, and I tried to get meetings. Um, we called it qualification meetings. Uh, and we just hopped on this meeting together with Raquel with a nice presentation. We didn't have a like full product ready and we were pitching and getting feedback and trying to understand their needs for social, for doing social at scale. And uh, yeah, and talking, talking, talking with customers. And uh, at the end of the day, we got, I think, five more on board. 
and uh, for different price tags. And that's where we realized, okay, so I think that experiment worked out. And then we started uh, an exciting event of hiring salespeople in the US. Okay. <laughs> so that was the second part of the second attempt. All right. Hey, if you go back a little bit on the <clears throat> on your first attempt, so I guess you, you were mentioning that you, you kind of did it with the marketing led and I guess you were uh, you were in Finland when you were doing this, uh, so it was just that you visited there and then you started to do, you get some partnerships. So could you, could you, you know, elaborate more and explain more on, on detail, how did this go, the, how did you kind of get customers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so in the, in the first SMB attempt, uh, we, we went for partnership to get initial uh, customers on board. With that, we also got some awareness, we could fine tune our value proposition. And we kind of repackaged our, uh, like we, we redone our landing pages. So we went vertical specific and we were doing some paid ads. Uh, also what worked well for us is content marketing. So we're uh, trying to create content articles, webinars to inspire small business owners to do social media marketing because it's kind of emotional thing. Uh, no one is, uh, no, no kind of owner of small business is saying, okay, now every day I'm going to, innovate and come up with a new beautiful post on social. So they needed inspiration to come to an idea of, of doing social media. Uh, so we, we even um, partnered, teamed up with, uh, with an opinion leader uh, who was a kind of social media professional and uh, he was playing a role of brand evangelist. And uh, he, he took over this um, this kind of content, uh, content marketing for us. And, um, and it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty okay. And even, uh, cheaper to do content marketing from Europe. So you can get copywriters, uh, here you can hire proofreaders from the U S so the con content looks like an created by con uh, by a native speaker, but that's a kind of really, really long story to create content marketing and then it affects your seo and then you get more more traffic on your website and you get more signups for trials and then you get more conversions so yeah it's um, a lot of experiments with different with different um, channels uh, so typical marketing mix that you create and iterate uh, trying to trying to get more uh, more us customers to sign up all right. So, all right. So if we go to the second part, I, it would be actually nice to hear like second time when you went to US market and you actually just touch on that point that you, you, you did your preparations and then you start to hire people. So uh, you can continue like uh, about the hiring part or, or if you want to still go a little bit more detail on the preparation, what, what's your... Mm -hmm. How was that? Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think the hiring part, uh, I would like to double click on that. So at some point you really, if you, if you, uh, already sure that your product can be like sold to an enterprise customer in the U S and that customer actually used the product and got some value and even upgraded. So that's a great sign that you can start planning, go to market and, um, um, and, and it means uh, like creating a sales team and uh, S SDR team, sales development team that can actually uh, like, like a system that, that can scale. And it all starts with hiring first, uh, first to account uh, executives. And I think like we learned you, you should hire in, in pairs. So there is some kind of a competition. So you start to find like a sales executives of the same qualification and then let them uh, uh, compete with each other for reaching the quota. Uh, and um, yeah, and the challenge for us uh, of hiring abroad was that uh, salespeople were really good at selling themselves. So they were like re really perfect uh, in, in everything, es especially for European, it was so hard to discover whether a salesperson can sell or cannot sell. So you have to come, now, now we're wise and you have to come uh, being ready despite their high salary levels, uh, you have to be ready to let the person go like really fast. And, and you, you cannot really uh, define on the interview whether a person uh, can sell or not. 
even based on the experience because experience might not correlate with your product. So it's about hiring people, doing your best to onboard them, to plant kind of this DNA of your company. So a person is interested about your company in addition to salary. And that's pretty hard. So um, what we did, uh, we brought a person to, uh, to Helsinki office and to Kiev office. Uh, our, our first salesperson to get to know the team was kind of a boot camp. And then like uh, we build this like personal connection and then yeah I, I think i think that worked uh we also did a pop-up office in the us so we just recently two weeks ago um uh, we we brought people um from the us uh, and uh, some, some product people from from kiev and my co-founder they all came together in utah for a pop-up office and worked around 10 days together so those things um, also work um, pr pretty well. So you, you have this limited time, so you do workshops, you talk with customers and uh, yeah, build, build this uh, personal, personal relationships. So for, um, for, uh, for hiring salespeople, of course, talk to other founders that already hired. They will give you a list of their hacks, but it will not help you. Just hire and onboard uh, as fast as possible. Like really uh, plan the onboarding and say uh, say the expectations. At the end of the month, I want you to get to fill your pipeline with at least five uh, conversations opportunities. In the second month, I want you to close one, even a small one, but close. So not waiting three months ramp up, four months ramp up. Like really, really pushing the speed, and that's that's how you will learn. How people whether a salesperson can sell your product or not. That's cool. All right. Hey, you mentioned that you asked for founder for advices, other founders, but did you see for any other kind kind of uh, advisors or somebody who helped you kind of get these things ready and aligned? Yeah. So we um, we worked with the recruitment a boutique in New York. Um, so these guys are. Pretty, pretty expensive. I think they're taking 20% of the annual salary of a salesperson, which is high. Uh, of course, you can negotiate this down, but uh, I would not negotiate with, um, with recruiters because you will get like lower level of candidates if you pay lower uh, commission. Why, why should they uh, give best candidate to you if you're being lower than they expect so and um, th that's pretty helpful because they are filtering away um, and uh, and they, they have uh, they have candidates they already know and sometimes this um, recruitment boutiques are used to work with startups so they know that what type of person they should recommend so the person like sticks with the with the startup because kind of being a salesperson in a startup where product is changing all the time and expectations change you need, you need to be like if you if you worked at microsoft or oracle before uh, that will not that will not work out so recruiters are good um, however when it comes to a point where you already successfully recruited a couple of account execs uh, but you are still involved and you lead this as a founder and the time comes when you you when you're ready to hire head of sales uh, that's where I would go for an advisor. So we, we, we worked with an advisor who was a head of sales of an uh, early stage startup himself several times. So he went through the pain of building the initial sales team uh, and scaling from, uh, from a million to, uh, to five or 10 million several times. And then he built a business out of it. So as a head of sales, he's kind of creating the process of hiring head of sales for, for uh, startups or scale-ups. And uh, that was really helpful because he, he could speak on the same level with, uh, with some cool people. And uh, um, he's a part of a community of, uh, of salespeople. That's where he sourced these candidates. So uh, and typically you don't get good candidates just posting a job offer on LinkedIn. So uh, uh, we really liked the, the collaboration. Uh, and uh, part of this collaboration was also creating an assignment. So but a candidate was presenting us a plan of how to set up a uh, sales team and how to grow. And even talking with, with these uh, candidates um, gives you a, a lot of knowledge how to, how to make things work and what to take into account and, and so on. Yeah. 
and uh, and we also built an advisory board uh, with the seasoned uh, CEOs um, from our niche, and they were kind of vetting candidates together with us and testing them. So we put a lot of a lot of effort to find a head of sales who uh, who fits our culture and and also has the skill set of uh, building our sales team. And we are onboarding him, so he's in his uh, uh, third no second month now. Oh, okay. Cool. All right, but I think now it's time that we get the audience uh, come uh, together with us with uh, with the questions. So, audience, you can go to menti.com, use the same link, same code, and you can you can write your message uh, the the questions over there. So let's just all right now it's ready. So go menti.com. The code is five eight four nine zero nine three seven, and you can write any questions that you have had this far and Max, we can continue the conversations here uh, while we wait for people to 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 write yeah. their questions there. But uh, so uh, I think this is really broad question, <laughs> but I'm going to ask it anyways, and you can choose what you want to answer. But if you could do it all over again, what kind of things you would do differently? Mm -hmm. You can choose like uh, some specific thing. Probably it's better that way. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, when targeting uh, SMBs, we would find um, we would find a niche um, earlier. So we were going really broad. We were targeting all types of SMBs and um, SMEs, florists, and I don't know, barber shops at the same time, and that made us move like really slow with our content marketing. Uh, uh, without uh, with, with with everything, so I would I would really uh, I would really focus on some some type of a vertical of uh, um, and a segment of customers that can pay uh, the highest price. And actually, actually, we were really close of doing it right. So when we came to to the U.S., we uh, we made made actually another hack. So we um, we pointed a vacancy on Upwork that we are looking for a social media freelancer to manage our social media of Promo Republic. And there were so many people that applied and we talked with them about the product and actually the technology they would want to use. So in that way, we kind of turned the interview to a demo of our product and trying to get them as customers. And we had pretty good response, but somehow we left this market as just part of the SMB and continued uh, marketing broadly. But then after several years, we came back to agencies and freelancers and succeeded creating a product for them. So I would go for a, for a niche. And, uh, uh, oh, we're having questions. So shall we? Uh, yeah, we can, we can go. But if, if there's anything you wanna add, go ahead and I'll pick them up. Uh -huh. the questions. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. So uh, in that sense, uh, and I would go also even earlier to US uh, just to get the feeling of, of the market and of the culture and spend, uh, spend several, several, several months there um, if you are responsible for product. And as a founder uh, of pre-seed stage startup, you are. So the, the ones who are building the actual product, they should, they should go and get, get the feel of, of that market, how people communicate and, uh, and all, the, all the cultural aspects. And, I, and I, I would get advisors, I would get to talk to people more that already did this, this path. Yeah, I think those are really good advices. Get to know the market and focus on a really small niche. I think that, that pops up many times in, in when, we, when we go through applications that they could even find a really good niche yeah. product. And they always raise kind of interest that if somebody can find a really good niche and, and start building from there. All right, but let's go for the questions. And uh, the first one is, it seems you have found a way to scale. What are your next goals? And I, I think that's a good question since you're just uh, did a major hire. And yeah, yeah. yeah, so we are now at a point where we have this kind of product market fit for, for uh, two niches of enterprise customers. And uh, it's all about go to market. And uh, we, we, we prepared for it. So we, we hired head of sales who is ready to scale the sales team. Uh, we hired a board of um, advisory board, active advisory board with people uh, who already scaled startups. And it's all about like raising an A round and, uh, and uh, scaling 
both sales team, but also marketing team that operates specifically in the two verticals that we identified. It's franchise and uh, direct sales. Um, and of course, product has to, uh, has to evolve all the time as well. So it's this kind of um, cross-functional uh, collaboration and scaling of marketing and sales, uh, but also customer success and, and, and product. Uh, so yeah, so these are the goals, pretty, pretty exciting goals. And our company changed a lot in terms of culture, in terms of everything from kind of family based values to now like more, um, more like enterprise and mature, uh, mm. uh, get to hire more mature and experienced people. So it's an interesting, interesting um, period. Yeah. Hey, actually, it would be great to quickly, uh, if you could mention, because I know you're located in in several locations. So how many people you have working and where are they located? Yeah, uh, so we have um, in, in the US, we have head of sales and uh, three account execs actually. So one is a US guy, but he is a nomad. He's traveling around the world. And uh, two of our sales people are based in the, in the US. And we're planning to set up a physical office uh there because that increases the performance dramatically especially when you have a head of sales so we can build the culture and uh, and the whole environment we have our customer success in uk uh in london where our head of customer success and customer success manager are uh, located we're planning to scale uh, that team as we grow so it's kind of in the middle of us and our product team that is uh that is based in um, uh, like our uh, product team is based in Eastern Europe in Kiev. So that's where the engineers and uh, product people are. And uh, yeah, so I'm uh, and uh, co-founder are ba based in Helsinki and uh, we are kind of uh, not, not, not that much traveling, but plan to spend more and more time in the US because uh, things with the, with the pandemics are like really uh, mo moving further, like re really quickly and uh, US is coming back to normal really fast. And if you are now one of the first ones who goes there and sells, I think that's a first mover advantage. Um, yeah, so um, we have a like, pretty big R&D team in, in Kiev and uh, yeah, grow, growing our sales and customer success team with, with the revenues. I'm sure we could spend uh, an another 45 minutes talking about <laughs> just that, but uh, let's go through the uh, rest of the questions so that we, you get to answer all the questions that the audience has. So the next one is that the US market is a huge market and uh, any difference in, on entering East, West or Central. So, so I don't know if you have experience on this. Well, you've been in, uh, building a business in Kiev and, and of course in Finland, so maybe you can elaborate. Yeah, so, um... In the US, there, there are for sure uh, differences. So, um, I mean, we're targeting um, uh, MLM and direct selling companies, and these are mainly based in Utah and Texas, just historically. And um, these guys are kind of old school. They're doing business in their specific, so it's, it's their own universe. So we didn't see the differences in terms of East or West Coast, but rather different types of businesses uh, are doing uh, doing stuff their way. So for, for direct selling companies, you have to be meet physically, be on the events, play golf, I don't know. Uh, for, for franchises, you can do a typical cold outreach, just calling them, writing emails. So they're pretty, pretty standard, standard company. So there are differences based on the customer profile. And uh, the only difference is uh, time. So uh, working with, um, with um, West Coast, uh, is uh, pr pretty challenging from uh, from Finland, so I would uh, I would avoid that. All right, cool, great points. Uh, then you mentioned different steps you took when scaling, marketing, hiring, sales, try getting traction through an agency. From all these and with your experience, what is the one single first thing you would advise when going to US? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, of course, it depends on the product. So uh, I would not hire a sales guy if you don't get like at least, I don't know, 5,000, five, um, 10,000 of uh, re annual revenue from a customer. So you, you, can, you cannot afford 
uh, even like uh, low profile transactional salespeople. So, um, and even that I would not start hiring, hiring a salesperson. I would, um, I would get a kind of gen uh, native speaker, generalist, I don't know, customer success person, product person, whoever you can get or an advisor or maybe a consultant. And uh, I would pitch and uh, educate this person on the product and I would do this initial outreach to customers um, myself. Uh, and um, yeah, and of course you can, you can test uh, before even doing that, you can do some marketing uh, stuff to get, to get the leads. And it's always good to start with that. So you, I mean, sending emails is also a marketing channel because you pitch uh, different pain points and uh, you, you can get you can get a reply and have this meeting scheduled. So I would I would really do whatever marketing and sales wise to get these meetings with your like potential ideal customers, uh, customer ideal customer personas. I would I would really focus on that and on the on these conversations. So formulate hypothesis what type of a product, who would potentially buy and get these people, however, on, uh, to, on, on the phone, uh, on Zoom. Uh, definitely, I would start with that. Even before building a product, it, it's enough to have a presentation with, a, um, with the product features there. And you can be really open that you have not, don't have a product yet. You are showing the perfect solution that you're working on and it will be live in a couple of months. So. I think that was a great advice and we can kind of finish this conversation there. And Max, I want to thank you so much for joining this Founders Club. I think there's a lot of valuable information that you share with, with the audience today. And of course, this can be also seen uh, in the YouTube later on this conversation. But anyways, uh, thanks, Max for joining uh, and, and now I've got to mention the Primo Republic. Uh, uh, so, so you can get, as if you're a FIBAN Founders Club member, meaning that you have a FIBAN uh, uh, member as an investor in your company, you are liable for 50% uh, off from the Primo Republic uh, product. Uh, you can go and check the details on fiban.org slash founders. And Max, thank you for being the last uh, guest for, for before we go for the summer break. And, and before we end this, I wanna mention uh, if we can switch the slide. So remember to use also the other uh, perks that we have. So there is a lot of different kind of perks that we have. And now we have Promo Republic uh, added there. Uh, also, if, if you are uh, running a successful uh, funding run, you can share that news with us uh, and, and uh, yeah, all right, but hey, join the event. You can find more information. So there's a lot of information on the Founders Club here. And then I gotta mention that we are actually today, as we're talking about expanding to the global uh, or international market, we have publishing, published an uh, article today with our partner Palaba Global. Uh, you can find this uh, article from fiban.org slash news and you can actually download a guide that will help you choose your market. So definitely check that blog as well, everybody online, online today and for the audience. And, and maybe Max, if you're looking for a next uh, <laughs> location to enter, you can also check that post. Cool, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for the invitation. If our uh, audience has have some more questions, I'm, I'm really open to, to grab, grab a virtual or physical coffee in Helsinki and reach out to me to max at promorepublic.com. Happy to elaborate more on our experience. And thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you, Max. And for the last slide, we have blank. <laughs> Here we go. So Founders Club events are going to continue after summer and upcoming events. We are talking about reverse pitching from FIBAN founders to the club members. So. For now, have an inspirational summer, uh, summer and see you in the autumn. Thank you and bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs>